Yelirigu namaskara. Uh, today I am going to engage the lecture on uh, natural and energy resources. I am Dr. Joy Hoskeri, Assistant Professor, Department of Bioinformatics, Karnataka State, Akamadevi Women's University. As we all know, the natural resources and the natural energy resources are abundant around us. So, we are going to explore what are the possible options with which we can generate energy and what are the methodologies through which we can restore energy and use that for some application, industrial application, home appliances and other various agricultural application. Primary sources of energy mainly includes nuclear energy, fossil energy. The fossil fuels that come from oil, coal, natural gas, renewable source of energy where we get continuous supply. For example, the wind, solar, geothermal energy and hydropower which are basically used in the application for generating electricity. These energy sources can be directly used for converting into electricity. A secondary source where we consider electricity as a secondary source because this is generated from the primary energy source. The primary energy source can be the wind energy, it can be water or hydropower, it can be solar. Eventually, we use these primary source of energy in order to convert into secondary source that is electrical energy. That can eventually be applied for our home appliances, electrical energy can be used for industrial purpose, for agriculture purpose and other businesses. Energy sources can be renewable or non-renewable. As the word indicate, renewable source of energy, they have we get continuous supply where there is the energy can be renewed because it is abundantly available. Whereas non-renewable sources of energy, they eventually get extinct with repeated use or repeated exploitation. These renewable source of energy or non-renewable source of energy are mainly used for converting this energy into form of heat or specifically into the form of electricity or in the formation of hydrogen. Non-renewable energy resources are uh, limited. So, of course, they are used for uh, energy consumption in many countries. Basically, non-renewable uh, sources of energy are at high use, which includes uh, petroleum that are mainly used for uh, running the vehicles, running the uh, uh, generators, hydrocarbon, liquid, uh, gas liquids, natural gases, coal and nuclear energy. These energy sources are called non-renewable because the supplies are limited to the amounts that we can mine or we can extract them from the earth and as we exploit them and as we use them, they uh, later get exhausted and uh, limited. Coal, natural gas, petroleum formed over thousands, I mean millions of years uh, being buried of, of uh, you know into the earth crust. Now, they are they are so called fossil fuels and how are these fossil fuels formed? When billions of years ago, when the plants, animals and all other organic matter including microorganisms were deposited into the earth crust, they eventually got buried into deeper into the earth crust. As they went deeper, these organic material were experiencing high amount of pressure and the heat that is existing within the earth crust. The heat and the pressure that made these organic material to get converted into the possible fossil fuels, which are oils. We call them as crude oil, which are pumped out and then uh, converted into petroleum and other uh, products that can be used as fossil fuels to run the various machineries 
for human welfare. There is also non-renewable energy in the form of nuclear energy where we use uh, uh, isotopes. For example, uranium is the most common isotope that is used for generating electricity through the fission reaction. I will be talking about that in the further slides. There are majorly five renewable sources of energy, solar energy which we get from sun, geothermal energy that we get it from the earth crust, the wind energy, the biomass energy from the forest and hydropower from the flowing water. Renewable sources are naturally replenished and that is the reason we consider them as the energy that can be renewed. As we get sunshine, the plants grow, the wind blows and the water, river water flows, there is no restriction or limitation for these energy and we can make use of these energy to convert them into useful uh, form of energy which is a secondary energy. Renewable, renewable energy was the main source of energy in the human history. Until 1800, uh, 18th century, man, human were dependent on the renewable sources of energy. Later in 19th century, humans started depending on fossil fuels because that is the era where humans started extracting crude oil and started using the fossil fuels for their uh, daily uh, requirements in order to run machineries and other appliances. In 1980, human uh, realized that they can use the biomass and largely use the renewable source of energy to produce electricity and heat and apply them for their regular applications. Renewable source of energy, as I mentioned, the solar energy, the biomass energy, wind energy, geothermal energy and hydropower energy are renewable, limitlessly can be used. Whereas non-renewable sources of energy are fossil fuels, the coal, natural gas and nuclear energy, they are non-renewable. To speak about solar energy, as you all are familiar, the solar energy is mainly obtained from our nearest star that is sun. Now how sun is producing this enormous amount of energy that is released into the universe and the sun energy comes to the earth in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Now what happens in the sun let us explore. Solar energy is created by nuclear fusion. So, I want you to be very specific of this word, the fusion. What happens in the sun? Sun is also a star in which there is a massive amount of nuclear reaction happening where we call it as proton-proton reaction. In the proton-proton reaction, there is a fusion of two protons, two hydrogen atoms and during the the strong collision between two hydrogen atoms, there is an enormous amount of energy released. To be very specific, 620 million metric ton of hydrogen is actually fused in every second inside the, the sun. And during this fusion of the protons, there is huge amount of energy released and this energy uh, ultimately leads to the uh, release of heat. The temperature in the stars is around 4 million degree Kelvin which accounts to 4 million degree centigrade or Celsius and 7 million degree Fahrenheit. In, uh, there are other stars which are much more bigger than sun which are 1.3 times bigger than sun where we call there is a CNO cycle happening which is the reaction between carbon, nitrogen and oxygen leading to conversion of hydrogen to helium. They eventually lead to the production of high amount of energy 
during this nuclear fusion reaction. Now, this reaction leads to formation of energy in the form of heat and this particular heat and light that has been generated in the sun is released towards the earth. And as this energy comes to the earth, it comes in the form of electromagnetic radiation and we all are familiar that the electromagnetic radiation moves in the form of waves. Okay. Electromagnetic radiation exists as waves of having different frequencies. As we see the spectrum, we have different colors in the electromagnetic spectrum. We all are familiar that infrared spectrum which is red, UV spectrum which is blue. So, this spectrum totally speaks about the wavelength. The wavelength, the lesser the wavelength, the higher the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. For example, the ultraviolet rays have less wavelength, high frequency and thereby they can easily penetrate through our the through the earth's atmosphere. Now, they can be low frequency waves and high frequency waves as I mentioned UV as high frequency wave whereas infrared as low frequency wave. Now, infrared is a heat generating wave that penetrates through the earth's atmosphere and then it comes and heats our earth crust as we feel heat and then the energy has to reflect back to the universe. During the reflection, this heat or this energy gets trapped into the earth's atmosphere by the natural gases which are uh, nitrogen oxides, carbon monoxide, water vapor. They eventually uh, shield and retain the heat into the earth's atmosphere and this is very important when we look at the warmth that is required for the survival of the organisms that is being facilitated through these greenhouse gases. They also have adverse effects when there is excess trapping of heat or the radiation that leads to global warming. Natural solar energy, greenhouse effect as I mentioned, the infrared visible and UV waves as they reach the earth, they take part in the process of warming which is called greenhouse effect. As I mentioned 30 percent of the solar energy that reaches the earth has to get refle reflected into the space, back into the space. But due to the presence of greenhouse gases, this energy which is supposed to be reflected back into the space gets trapped into the earth's atmosphere which leads eventually leads to the uh, global warming. Photosynthesis most common concept as we all know that the plants depend on the sun, the solar energy and they trap the solar energy and they are able to convert the solar energy into a photosynthetic reaction which leads to the survival of the plants. And this survival of the plants eventually help us in, uh, in absorption of carbon dioxide and release of oxygen on which we are dependent for our respiration. And this plants as they capture and survive on the solar energy, they, uh, they supply, they, they support to be the possible large biomass which can be used for uh, human welfare for the production of energy through biomass as well. Now, as we look at plants, plants are the key source of energy for living as in the form of food and as, uh, as a basic concept the consumers uh, they rely on plants for nutrients. The herbivores depend on plants, the carnivores and omnivores depend on herbivores. So, there is a dependency on plants in terms of nutrients and also dependency on the forest in terms of biomass energy. Fossil fuels, the photosynthesis is responsible for all the fossil fuels on earth because the plant biomass billions of years ago they got trapped into the earth crust and as they settled, they got buried, they got shifted to deeper uh, levels of earth and that deeper level of earth eventually led to increased pressure 
on this plant material and the heat inside the earth molten earth in the core the heat and the pressure led to the formation of fossil fuels which we extract and use it as the fossil fuel energy. How can we harness solar energy? There are many technologies that are available for harnessing solar energy and convert the solar energy into useful form of energy like electricity, heat and for cooking. So, for electricity basically we make use of photovoltaic cells or panels which are called as solar panels. And these solar panels are basically made up of uh, superconductor material okay, and these are uh, made up of silicon. Every solar cell contains semiconductor uh, usually made of silicon. When the sunlight falls on this semiconductor, the sunlight is absorbed, solar energy is absorbed and this leads to a knocking out of one electron from the silicon and this electrons that are released, they are then uh, channelized through, uh, through the um, a conductor, a wiring through which these electrons pass through in the form of electricity. The photovoltaic, the photovoltaic cells are also used in International Space Center. International Space Center itself has 33,000 uh, solar cells and this is helping the International Space Center on the space to make use of this energy for the research purpose, the scientific experiments for also for the household requirements in the International Space Center. How to concentrate? There is also another form of technology where we can concentrate the solar energy. The concentration of solar energy is basically done through the use of lenses or solar mirrors that are focused specifically on a particular area. As the solar energy gets concentrated on that particular area, that leads to the heating effect which can be used in cooking and this is the technology which is used in solar cookers. This can also be used in heating of waters and this water in the form of steam can be used for uh, running the turbines and also eventually lead to production of uh, electricity. Coming to wind energy, scientists and engineers are using this energy, wind energy to generate electricity. We all are familiar about the term wind farm. Wind farm is basically where the windmills having huge fans or blades that are situated at the high elevated areas and they are basically meant for generating electricity. Here the wind energy is used for the rotation of the blades and these blades are connected to the turbines and eventually lead to the production of energy. The wind blows and the blade of the turbine which are attached to the rotor are then their spin a generator to create electricity. There are two types of wind turbines, one is horizontal axis wind turbine, another one is vertical axis wind turbine. Horizontal axis is most commonly seen all around the world where uh, large blades are connected to a kind of aeroplane like propeller and they are vertically rotated. Whereas uh, the, uh, the uh, sorry the horizontally rotated. Whereas vertical um, axis uh, wind turbines, they are uh, rotated uh, vertically. These blades are normally curved uh, in nature. To speak about the amount of energy, these wind turbines or the windmills generate. The small individual wind turbines can generate 100 kilowatt of power. Though the, this, in, uh, this particular power is enough for the uh, uh, homely applications. Small wind turbines are normally used for uh, in water pumping stations also. A little larger wind turbines, uh, they are set on larger towers at the height of 
80 meters or 260 feet and have rotor blades which are large enough they are nearly 40 meters or 130 feet long and these turbines they are mid variants they can generate up till 1.8 megawatt of power. There are even larger uh, wind turbines and they are larger and they are placed under high elevated areas around 240 meters high and 787 feet uh, uh, high and the blades can reach up till uh, 162 meters. They can generate a massive amount of energy nearing to 4.8 to 9.5 megawatt of power and this type of energy is a clean energy which we can make use of wind for generating the, the power. G electric G electricals uh, US based company they can they have come out with a, another alternative they connect batteries to these uh, windmills and they are able to store this uh, wind energy into the battery. The largest offshore wind farm is uh, in the world is the Volney extension. This is one of the important questions. The, this wind farm is located in Irish Sea, approximately 19 kilometers away from the northwest of England. Now, this covers a massive area of 149 square kilometers. Now, this is considered to be the largest wind farm in the world. Remember Walney extension. Now, Walney extension has the ability to generate 659 megawatt of power which is enough to run 6 lakh homes in United Kingdom. So, United Kingdom is uh, especially the England part is largely dependent on wind energy. Soil energy, the next type of energy. As we all know soil is available limitlessly. Soil has is a sustainable way of cooling and heating buildings. Though it is a primary source of energy and this cannot be converted into secondary source, if the soil is mixed with some organic matter like cocoa to form cocoa peat, if that particular material is burnt, then the secondary form of energy that is heat can be generated. However, soil remains the primary form of energy which is basically used for insulation either to retain heat or to make the environment cool that is basically used in the buildings as you all are familiar which we call it as cold heat uh, storage system where we use uh, the, the soil. We are also familiar with the clay that is used in the fuse or electrical switches where the heat is controlled where the heat is insulated by this particular clay or soil material. Now, soil is very important for the plants because plants gain the most of their minerals, micronutrients and also the nutrients from the soil and that facilitates the growth of the biomass and we all are familiar that biomass is also a form of energy that can be used for generating secondary form of energy that is heat and electricity that we will be discussing in the coming slides. Hydroelectric energy, hydroelectric energy is a form of renewable energy that uses power of the moving water or flowing water to generate electricity. Now, here are the questions that might come in hydroelectric uh, hydroelectricity or hydroelectric energy it is important the water should be flowing and there is the flow of the water is totally dependent on the gravitational force so make a point to remember that the gravitational force is the key concept that makes the water to flow in a particular direction and even if the dam doors are opened, the water flows down with the maximum 
energy and this energy is allowed to flow through the turbine and as the water flows the turbines rotate and electrical energy is generated. Hydroelectric energy also called as hydroelectric power or hydroelectric uh, electricity in the form of energy that harnesses the power of the water in motion. The water flowing over the waterfall can be used and also the dams that are man-made architectures that, that retain the water and the retained water has rich potential. Once the dam door are opened, the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy and this kinetic energy, kinetic energy is a moving energy or the energy that is in motion and this energy eventually leads to the rotation of the turbine. Now, most hydroelectric power plants have the reservoir of water, the gate or valves to control how much of water flows out, out of the reservoir and the outlet or the place where the water ends up after flowing the downwards. Water gains potential just before it spills over the top of the dam and flows down the hill. The potential energy is converted into kinetic energy as the water flows downhill. The water can, this flowing water can now turn the blades of the turbine to generate electricity. Types of hydroelectric energy plants, there are basically three types. One of the most common type is impoundment facility where the dams are constructed and the water is stored. When the water gets stored in the dam, enormous amount of potential energy is trapped in the water, in the stored water. And when the dam doors are open, this amount of energy, this potential energy is then changed into kinetic energy or flowing energy. And this particular energy or the flowing water has the ability to rotate the turbines and generate electricity, turbine blades and that leads to the generation of electricity. Another type of hydroelectricity uh, energy plant uh, is diverting the uh, river water flowing and you can divert the river water specifically where the turbines are situated and that also leads to the production of energy. The third type is pumped storage facility. In the pumped storage facility, the energy that has been generated through wind energy or solar energy or nuclear energy. Using this energy, the water is pumped to a higher location and from there, whenever there is requirement for electricity, that particular water is allowed to flow down into the turbine to generate electricity. Hydroelectric energy is most commonly used renewable source of electricity. China is the country that is largest producer of hydroelectricity. Other countries that are top producers include United States, Brazil, Canada, India and Russia. Approximately 71 percent of all the renewable electricity generated on this planet earth is through the hydroelectric power. What is the largest hydroelectric power plant in the world? This particular power plant is located in China, which is called Three Gorges Dam in China. This holds the river, which name, uh, name of the river is Yangtze River. This is the largest hydroelectric dam in the world in terms of the amount of electricity that it produces. This dam is about 2335 2, meters that is uh, equates to 7660 feet long and 185 meters which equates to 607 feet tall. This, amount, this particular dam generates energy of about 22500 megawatt of power. Here are the questions that, that you can get on uh, the hydroelectric power. The gra gravitational force supports the flow of water. The conversion of the potential energy into kinetic energy is mainly supported by the gravitational force 
and this leads to the flowing of water in a particular direction and that can be connected to the turbines. Turbine blades are rotated by the flowing water and that leads to the production of electrical energy. You might also get questions from which country is the largest producer of hydroelectric power which refers specifically to China. China is mainly engaged in production of hydroelectric power. They are also engaged in production of energy through nuclear uh, sources. The dam that is located in China is the largest hydroelectric power generator. The name of the dam is the Three Causes Dam. Coming to geothermal energy. Geothermal energy is heat that is generated within the earth. As I mentioned, the earth core is very hot. It is nearing 5000 degrees centigrade. I will be talking about that. It is a renewable source of energy because the earth core is constantly getting heated. Geothermal energy is heat that is generated within the earth. Geo means earth, thermal means heat. It is a renewable source of energy that can be harvested and harnessed for the human use. About 2900 kilometers below the earth crust from the surface, there is a hot core and this hot core is mainly formed due to the friction and the gravitational pull formed during the earth when it was formed billions of years ago. However, vast majority of earth's heat is constantly generated by the decay of radioisotope, mainly the potassium 40 and thorium 232. What are these isotopes? These isotopes are elements that have a different number of neutrons than the regular version of their elemental form. Now, potassium 40, basically potassium has 40, 20 neutrons in its nucleus, but potassium 40 has 21 neutrons in its nucleus. So, this particular radioisotope when it gets decayed it releases enormous amount of energy and this potassium 40 most often decays into another type of isotope that is the calcium isotope which is calcium 40 and argon isotope which is argon 40. During this radioactive decay the amount that heat gets generated this heat is actually within the earth core and that leads to melting of rocks which we call it as molten rock and then due to high pressure and if the, the pressure finds any vent or a small passage on the earth crust, it comes out in the form of the steam, the water steam and also in the form of volcano, it can burst out on the earth crust. Now speaking about the, the water content that is there in the earth crust that got heated because of the internal heat that the earth has, this water, heated water, they find their way out in the form of hot springs. They find their way out in the form of the hot stream that comes out of the earth crust. And these steam can be used, harnessed for running the turbines and generating electricity. If underground rock formation are heated to about 700 to 1300 degrees centigrade, they become magma. Magma is molten rock permeated by gas and gas bubbles. Magma exists in the mantle and lower crust and sometime bubble to the surface as lava what we know uh, the outflow of the volcanic eruption. Magma heats nearby rocks and underground aquifers. The hot water can be released through the geysers, hot springs, steam vents, underwater hydrothermal vents and mud pots. These are the sources of geothermal energy. Their heat can be captured and directly used for heating purpose and also for generating of electricity. Now, geothermal energy can be used to heat buildings, parking lots and uh, sidewalks. Normally, this heat hot water is required in the countries where there is uh, snowing, where there is cold, at, uh, cold temperature, there the rooms are heated by uh, using hot water piping. 
So, geothermal energy can be a renewable source of energy without using any electrical energy to, uh, to heat the water. We can use this naturally heated water for heating buildings. This is how the geothermal energy works. This is a schematic diagram. Heat from the earth crust creates steam. The water in the earth crust gets heated up and this st uh, steam rotates the turbine. We can pipe rightly, the steam can be projected towards the turbine and the high pressure steam can move the blade or the rotate the blade of the turbine eventually leading to the production of electricity and that can be used for our regular machine running. The next type of energy is nuclear energy. The questions that can appear from geothermal energy is what is the main source of geothermal energy? The main source of geothermal energy is the heated hot water or the steam and this steam can be used for uh, generating electricity or heating the buildings. Geothermal energy can be used for running uh, vehicles, can be used for uh, running machines in the industries and also in home appliances. Nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is the energy that is there existing in the nucleus of every atom. Now, nuclear energy can be used to create electricity, but it must first be released from the atom. The nucleus has the energy and this energy that is trapped in the nucleus has to be released out and then be used for a specific purpose that is generating electricity. Nuclear energy is a type of energy in the nucleus or the core of an atom. Atoms are tiny units that make up all living matter in the universe. Energy is what holds the nucleus together. There is a huge amount of energy in the atom's dense nucleus. In fact, the power that holds the nucleus together is officially referred as strong force. Nuclear energy can be used to create electricity, but it must first be released from the atom. In the process of nuclear fission, the atom splits to release energy. When I was talking about the energy, the solar energy, I mentioned about nuclear fusion. There is a difference between nuclear fusion and nuclear fission. In nuclear fusion, there is a fusion of two atoms. Here in solar energy, there was fusion of two protons. Here in nuclear energy, there is a fission, that is a breaking of a particular atom. A nuclear reactor or a power plant is a series of machines that can control nuclear fission to produce electricity. The fuel that nuclear reactor used to produce nuclear fission is pellets of uranium. In the nuclear reactor, the atoms of uranium are forced to break apart. And as they split, the atom release tiny particles and these pa tiny particles will further lead to the fusion, uh, lead to the splitting of neighboring uranium atoms. Now, this process is called fission and this is a continuous process. Now, until and unless we do not control these particles that are released after fission, this process will never stop. So, this fission when uranium atom splits, it releases enormous amount of energy in the form of heat. Now, the heat created by the nuclear fission warms the nuclear uh, power station cooling agents. Name, basically, the cooling agent in the nuclear power station will be water and as this water gets heated up, this heated water or the steam of this particular water can be used to force to rotate the turbines and generate electricity. In every nuclear power plant, there are some rods made up of xenon and these rods normally absorb the 
the fission products because if the fission products are not absorbed they lead to further fission of uranium which becomes a continuous reaction. In order to control the nuclear fission reaction in the nuclear reactor these xenon rods are placed. The more the rods are placed the more the nuclear reaction is controlled. As of 2011 about 15 percent of the world's electricity is generated by nuclear power plants. There are many countries that are totally dependent on nuclear power plant. One of the most common countries is Slovakia, Lithuania, France. These are the countries that are dependent on nuclear power, power then hydroelectric power. Uranium as I mentioned uranium is the sp specific fuel that is used for generation of electricity in nuclear power plant. Now, uh, as I mentioned this uranium uh, is one that gets split and then uh, release lot of energy and this energy used for heating water and the steam that is being produced through heated water is used to run the turbines. Uranium 235 is a specific uh, uranium um, isotope that is being used for generating nuclear energy. This is a schematic diagram of how the fission takes place. When a neutron hits one uranium 235 atom this leads to the, the splitting of the uranium 235 atom and formation of uranium 236 and also leading to release of three neutrons. And these neutrons are ready to go and attack another uranium atom and leading to splitting of that. And this becomes a eventual continuous process leading to release of lot of heat, a uh, lot of energy in the form of heat. So, the questions that are expected in this area will be what is the, the nuclear fuel used in the nuclear power station and what is the mechanism of generating the nuclear power. Now, the nuclear fuel that is used is uranium 235 be specific whereas the concept that is uh, the, 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 the mechanism through which the, the electricity is generated is through the fission of uranium atom. Fission is breaking, fusion is joining. So, be specific about this term, fission reaction is the one which is, uh, which is actually applied here due to fission of an atom leads to breaking of an atom releasing energy the atom that is used here is uranium. Coming to biomass energy, this is another renewable form of energy as we are all are familiar. The organic biomass on this planet earth which includes microorganisms, which includes plants, which includes animals, all type of organic matter they are considered to be the biomass on this planet earth. Now, biomass are renewable source of organic material that comes from plants and animals. Biomass contain, uh, the biomass contain a stored chemical energy from the sun. Specifically in plants due to photosynthetic reaction or photosynthesis, plants capture the solar energy and trap them in the form of chemical energy. Biomass can be buried directly, uh, sorry biomass can be burnt directly for, for heating purpose or to convert it into liquid or gaseous fuels for various processes. Biomass was the largest source of uh, total annual energy consumption in the mid 80s as I said uh, 1800, 8th, 18th century, 1800 in the 18th century it was the main source of energy. In the 19th century human explored the fossil fuels from 1980s we started applying the fossil fuels and other forms of energy nuclear energy. Now we are dependent on all types of energy including wind, solar, nuclear, hydroelectrical other than biomass energy but there are many other countries which are still dependent on biomass energy. Plants we use plants for burning we will try to explore how the burning of plant material is a source of energy in the current world. Biomass sources of energy include wood and wood processing waste which includes firewood, 
wood pellets, wood chips, lumber, furniture mill sawdust, waste, black liquor from pulp and paper mills, agricultural crops, waste materials like from corn, soybean, sugarcane, grass, woody plants, algae and crops and fruit processing residues uh, mostly to produce biofuels. Biogenic materials like municipal waste, solid waste, paper uh, products, cotton, wool products, food yard and other wood wastes are also source of energy. Animal manure and human sewage is also a primary source of energy which can be uh, used for uh, production of biogas that is specifically methane. Here you can see there is a simple diagram which I want to highlight. The biomass is basically converted into a super solid biofuel by the process called torrefaction. I will be talking about what is torrefaction and the torrefacted biomaterial can be used for further usage for burning, for consumption. Uh, combustion for pyrolysis for gasification. The thermal conversion of biomass. Biomass can be burnt by, thermo by thermal conversion and used for energy. The thermal conversion involves heating the biomass or feedstock in order to burn, dehydrate and stabilize it. The most familiar biomass feedstock for thermal conversion are raw materials such as municipal solid and scripts from paper and lumbar mills. Different types of energy are created through direct firing, co-firing, pyrolysis, gasification and anaerobic decomposition. All of these are different methods where we can use for generating energy. Before biomass can be burnt, however, it must be dried. We cannot use wet biomass directly for generating energy. This chemical process is called torrefaction. During torrefaction, biomass is heated to 200 to 320 degrees centigrade and during this process, the biomass dries out where the water that is, that is present in the biomass gets evaporated. As the water loses, now this uh, will have the ability uh, will have the ability to get dried and catch fire immediately. Now, it is known that when the torrefaction is done, around 20 percent of the original biomass weight gets reduced due to release of the moisture from the biomass material. The lost energy and the mass can be used to fuel the torrefaction process. During torrefaction, biomass becomes dried blackened material and it is then compressed into the briquettes. Biomass briquettes are very hydrophobic, the hydrophobic they are uh, they do not attract water meaning they repel water. This makes it possible to store them in moisture area. Briquettes have high density energy density and can be used directly for uh, the purpose of fire, firing for generating heat. They can also be used for co-firing along with coal. Direct firing and co-firing. Most briquettes are burned directly. The steam that gets produced during uh, the firing process can be used to run turbines. This is what happens in, in the thermal power stations. In biomass can also be co-fired along with the fossil fuels, they can be co-fired along with the coal plants and they can facilitate and reduce the consumption of other fossil fuels and coal. Pyrolysis is another method of uh, burning the biomass. Here the burning is done in oxygen free condition. That means pyrolysis is related to a method of heating biomass. During pyrolysis, biomass is heated to 200 to 300 degrees centigrade without the presence of oxygen. This keeps it from 
combusting and causes the biomass to become chemically altered. Now this pyrolysis where there is no oxygen, where is no, there is no consumption, uh, combustion, this particular biomass gets converted into a liquid form and also in a gaseous form. The, the gaseous form is called syngas whereas the solid uh, form which is like a, a kind of a char we call it as biochar and the liquid that is called the pyrolysis oil which will be a dark color oil or we all can also call it as bio crude or bio oil or tar. Now during the pyrolysis the three different products we get from biomass this is an important question. What are the different types of products that are found after pyrolysing the biomass? It can be the liquid which is called pyrolysis oil, it can be so the solid which is the biochar or it can be the gas which is called syngas. Gasification. Gasification biomass can also be directly be converted to energy through the process of gasification. During this gasification process, the biomass feedstock is heated to more than 700 degrees centigrade with a controlled amount of oxygen. The molecule break down and the products, the, uh, they, they, they lead to the production of syngas as I mentioned, this is what happens during the pyrolysis. Now syngas is a combustion of a combination of hydrogen and carbon monoxide. During gasification, syngas uh, is cleaned from uh, sulphur and other particulate matters, mercury and other pollutants. This can be used for uh, the uh, as a fuel, okay. uh, we also call it as biofuel. There is a slag during gasification another uh, raw uh, product that is being produced which is called slag which forms which is in the form of a glassy liquid molten. This can be used in asphalts or in cement material. Anaerobic decomposition we all are familiar with biogas plants where the human waste and the animal uh, waste is used in anaerobic by the action of microorganisms, this biomass is converted into methane. Now there are methanococcus, there are many other bacteria that can convert, they can use the, the nutritional uh, availabilities that is there in the biomass and they can eventually produce methane gas. And this methane gas is a natural gas which can be used for heating and cooking purpose and also can be used for uh, machinery running. Energy from forest, here you can get questions from this particular point, the biofuels, what is the name of the gas that is produced by anaerobic decomposition of methane, uh, decomposition of biomass? The gas that is produced through anaerobic decomposition is methane and which is a highly efficient combustible gas. Energy from forests, forests and tree are vital natural resources upon which people rely for firewood, shelter and for powering machinery and industrial activities. A modern form of energy derived from biomass known as bioenergy which I was talking about has become more common nowadays. Currently typically uh, the typical source of biomass is crops, natural forest, managed tree plantation and agricultural crops. In the future new technologies are likely to produce fuels from a wide range of uh, material including algae. Globally nearly 2.5 billion people are still dependent on traditional biomass energy. It offers a potential to sustainability meeting growing energy demands and with the added benefits of restoring degraded lands specifically as we depend on forest more 
we go with the technology of afforestation and avoid deforestation with which you can use the forest as a source of energy. Here are the, this image speaks about different sources of wood. We have pulp wood, we have general use wood, we have saw wood and these are mainly used for industrial purpose, 67 percent of these woods are contributing for industrial use. We have low quality wood, firewood and residues from the wood cutting, they are used for as energy woods which contribute to 20 percent, whereas the dead wood, they, uh, the retention trees which are uh, not chopped and the chopped tree stumps, they contribute to 13 percent of the dead wood. Here I will be cap capturing some specific questions that can be asked. Many nations blend petrol with ethanol to, pr to reduce the emission of carbon monoxide. The mixture of petrol with ethanol is known as gasohol. Okay. So, there might be a simple twist where it can be gasol or gasohol, it is gasohol. The second question, which of the following statements are correct in respect to greenhouse, in respect of greenhouse gases? First option, they are generally of light green color, not necessarily, gases are not ne uh, in light green color. They absorb thermal radiation emitted by earth, yes that is a true point where the solar energy when it reaches the earth's atmosphere, it reflects back and the, the reflected radiation is captured by the greenhouse gases. So, the second point is valid point. Third, water vapor is a greenhouse gas very true, greenhouse gases are mainly carbon monoxide, the nitrogen oxides, water vapor. So, water vapor is part of the greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases causes global warming, yes it is a true fact. If there is increase in the amount of greenhouse gases, there will be increase in capturing of the reflected heat energy which leads to increase in global warming. Ammonia is a greenhouse gas, no ammonia is not the uh, one of the greenhouse gases, it is not one of the greenhouse gases. Hence the point B, they absorb thermal radiations emitted by earth, water vapor is part of greenhouse gas, greenhouse gases cause global warming, B, C and D are the right statements. Which of the following statements are correct related to renewable sources of energy? As I mentioned, they are finite and will run out eventually. This particular statement is applicable for non-renewable source of energy, hence this is a non-valid point. Point number two, solar energy is non-renewable source of energy which is wrong, solar energy is renewable source of energy. Wind, solar, hydropower are examples of renewable source of energy which is true, they are sources are examples of renewable sources of energy. Renewable sources of energy, renewable energy sources contribute significant to air pollution, well renewable sources are considered to be clean energy, the, hence the point is invalid. The fifth point, the use of renewable energy can help to reduce greenhouse gas emission which is true, hence the point number C and E are valid. Another question, which country is 
the largest producer of renewable source of energy in the world. As I had mentioned, China is considered to be the largest producer of renewable source of energy. With this, I conclude this topic. Thank you so much.